I'm a sociologist and my work is located in science and technology studies, which means I think about clothing as a tool or a device that can enable but also inhibit forms of mobility. I wasn't always interested in clothing. I had been doing contemporary cycling research and invariably in interviews with people they kept on talking about what they were wearing, about how in some cases looking like a proper cyclist enabled them to carve out cycling identities, but in other cases, and women were particularly articulate about this, they would talk about how looking too much like a cyclist could elicit unwelcome responses from fellow road users. And it turns out quite a lot of these things aren't new. I've been looking at a really small period of British history, 1895 to 1899, when lots of uh, middle and upper class men and women enthusiastically took to the bicycle. However, it was considerably easier initially for men to take to the bicycle because their bodies, society's understandings about masculine mobility and public space, and also their clothes meant their bodies fitted much more easily. And this is pretty much a story about how women made their bodies fit with this new technology because nothing was going to stop them from cycling. Anyone who cycles now can imagine um, what it might have been like to have you know, layers of flapping materials around moving mechanical parts. However, to cycle in more kind of rational clothing um, was not necessarily socially safer. Some women cyclists were subjected to rocks and sticks and stones. They were denied entry into places and kind of seen as a threat to society. Women in the 1890s were incredibly inventive and they responded to the challenges to their freedom of movement with you know, a whole range of ingenious and extraordinary designs. Women also lodged patents for radical new forms of clothing inventions. Looking into the archive, one in particular that I became incredibly excited by is a series of patents for convertible cycle wear. And here inventors deliberately uh, engineer technical systems into the infrastructure of skirts to enable wearers to transform their ordinary streetwear into cycle wear and back again. So it enabled them to kind of have these secret cycling lives. So I worked with a pattern cutter, an artist, a weaver and researchers to remake a collection of these costumes. We have been wearing them and thinking about them as live, dynamic, multi-dimensional storytelling devices because um, it's the combination of the body and the garment with these technological devices sewn into them that enables them to really make sense. So I'm wearing a patented design by Alice Louisa Bygrave. She lodged her UK patent in 1895 and it was for improvements in ladies' cycling dress. From the outside, it looks like a really simple A-line skirt, and yet um, built inside, the infrastructure of it, in the waistband, in the seams, in the hems, is a secret convertible system, which would clear all of this material um, from the ground and potentially from flapping around into the moving parts of your velocipede. The same thing is built into the back, so in effect then, you'd be wearing your bloomers underneath, but then not too much on show. Um, and it keeps the, um, all the materials out of the way of the wheels. And also creates what she called um, a garment that festooned over the hips. So I was interested in research as a form of making and making as a form of research. It provided an opportunity to invite people actually into the research by running sewing uh, workshops and what we were calling show and tell and try on events where people could actually get into the costumes and feel for themselves how they both enabled and also inhibited mobility and to transform them themselves. And there is something really delightful about getting into a costume that has these multiple and secret identities. What's fascinating to me is that their designs were concealed. They were deliberately built into the infrastructure of dresses, kind of hidden in plain sight. And I think this is why, one of the reasons why we don't know a lot about these designs now. 